It's winter. It's cold. It's snowing outside. I know you want a garden, so what can you do? How about getting organized? That's what we're going to talk about today on Gardening with Mark. Mark Carey from Steeple Bee Farm. Well, it's been a while since I have done a YouTube video, but that's because life is busy, right? I mean, we all have lots of things going on. I'm sure you do too. And uh, this is the time of the year where I really, really start to get jazzed up about our gardening for the upcoming season. Uh, on January 26th, uh, we held our first gardening workshop gathering in the greenhouse. Very well attended, limited seats to 12, and we had 13 people, so we were in very good shape. Uh, I think everybody enjoyed themselves, and I hope everybody who came learned a little something. I know I sent you out here with a packet of information that contains a lot of resources. So those of you who attended, again, thank you so much for coming, and uh, I hope that you find the stuff that we did that day to be helpful to you in your upcoming gardening season. I was uh, looking out this morning, and we are in what we call mud season here at Staple Butte Farm. Uh, right around the 1st of February, we start getting just enough rain that there's no bottom to the ground. I mean, you just literally can sink up over your boots anywhere. I mean, even in pastures. Um, then we get a freeze, then we get a little snow, then we get a little ice, and all of it tends to loosen the ground up, which is just great for gardening to allow the ground to come up and heave and let some oxygen in and let the moisture get down. And all of those are good for gardening, but they're not good for gardeners. So the ability to get out on the ground has been severely limited by the fact that it's awfully muddy out. This morning, the temperature has been very cold for the last couple of days, uh, well below freezing, in the teens, single digits in some places. And this morning we uh, got a little freezing rain, a little bit of snow. It's gonna warm up enough that it's gonna turn to all rain. So another two days of rain means another two days of mixing water into the mud. So today I'm sitting in the house with a cup of coffee on the computer, putting together the way in which we're going to schedule our production. And I wonder if people who are raising just backyard gardens or home gardens think about this, but I think it's a good suggestion that you should plan everything, plan everything you're going to do in your garden for the entire upcoming year. I've told an awful lot of young people who work here, and I've told a lot of other people along the way that uh, as a young law student, I was overwhelmed by the volume of work and could not have possibly scored well on my tests had I not been organized. Fortunately for me, I was able to apply that same kind of discipline for organization to my law practice, and I apply it to virtually every other aspect of my life. So people sometimes wonder, how do you do so much? How do you do so many things? I mean, you're a lawyer, you've got a farm, you've got all these other activities, you've got the jelly business. How do you do all of that? It's not as hard as you think if you're organized. So sometimes if you're thinking about your own garden this year, whether you're going to be market gardening or backyard gardening or just gardening as a hobby, um, you're going to have frustrations, right? We all have frustrations. Uh, we get frustrated because the weeds get out ahead of us or we get frustrated because we don't get planted in time or we get frustrated by the fact that everything's not going the way we want it or we don't have enough time to do what we want to do and our gardens don't look like they should look and... Then we're going to have everybody over for Memorial Day or Fourth of July, and we have to scramble around and do a lot of catch-up work. I might suggest that a little bit of organization early, now, when it's really too cold, too wet to get outside and do anything, would come in handy. Today I'm putting together my seeding schedule. And by that I mean some crops that we raise are direct seeded crops. Uh, squash, zucchini, uh, pumpkins, obviously, lettuce, carrots, uh, a lot of other crops, uh, cucumbers, we seed directly. But other crops are transplants, and transplant crops mean that you have to seed them into little trays where you will raise your transplants to a point where they're then ready to go into the garden. 
We talked about this at the seminar. You don't need any fancy trays. You don't need a lot of equipment like we use here on the farm. Um, but what you do need is something to put soil in and put seeds in, in a way to keep it moist, in a way to keep it humid uh, while the seeds are germinating and while they're growing to a size where you can then transplant them into your garden. I was uh, thinking about some of the ways we did when we began. We used old paper egg cartons. You can even use plastic egg cartons, poke a little hole in the bottom. Anything that'll hold little cups of soil for you to put seeds in. But when do you plant those seeds? And which ones do you plant first? And when do you want to go to the garden with them? So you kind of have to organize by working backwards. Think about the date on which you think you're going to be able to plant your garden. That would be after the last frost or close to the last frost date. Uh, putting, putting them into the garden also takes into consideration your work schedule, other obligations. It also takes into consideration, well, when am I going to get my soil ready to be planted in? Do I have debris I have to remove? Do I have to loosen the soil? Do I want to amend it with compost or rock dust or minerals or nutrients? Do I want to install uh, automatic irrigation this year? Do I want to put a soaker hose in or anything like that? All of those things may come before actually going to the garden with your seeds or your transplants. So now is a good time on a quiet, snowy, cold, wintry day to sit down and plan those things. And don't plan those things based upon um, a pre-knowledge. The fun, the real mystery of life that arrives through a garden that you get to witness up close and personal, that mystery gives you an opportunity to think in advance of what is to come, to relish the opportunity to see those vegetables growing, to think of the day when you get your first harvest, and all of that is going through your mind as you're making your planning, because that's what you start with. You start with the day when you harvest, and you work your way back to today. Schedule your seeds for planting, schedule your seeds for transplanting, schedule the transplanting, schedule all of that now while you've got some time. Sit back and make a list. Look at your calendar. Figure out which days you're gonna be off work, which days you're going to be able to be home, which days you're likely to have the grandkids, which days you're gonna be out of town. Figure all of the work in your garden around that, working toward that goal of identifying the day that you're going to be able to step into the garden with your healthy young transplants and start a new cycle of life that you will get to reward yourself with through the harvest later in the season. Start now. Do your planning. Make a list. Put it on the calendar. And dream along with the rest of us of warm, sunny, dry days in the garden. I'm Mark Carey from Steepleview Farm. If you like our videos, please subscribe. Hit the little bell. You'll be notified when new content gets posted. And in addition to that, be sure to log on to our website, www.steepleviewfarm.net. And for our gourmet products, visit our store. The link is on the main website at steepleviewfarm.net. We'd love to see you come and visit us. We're open and transparent all year long, and we're very easy to find. Five miles south of Glencoe, 11 miles north of Owenton, right on US 127 in beautiful downtown Poplar Grove, Kentucky. We hope to see you here.